how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty good in my car. Right, exactly. Um, I just want to point out that you think that, you know, Jamie, having a successful movie career, uh, could afford to be somewhere other than his car. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing, I'm, you know. I'm, it's I'm, a nice car. Sure. <laughs> I'm teasing. Uh, I've been asking this of everyone I've been talking to recently, a few, the next few questions. Um, is there a TV series you would love to guest star on? Um, succession. It's just so good. Like, it's just mind alteringly good acting, and uh, it's just insane. Uh, what movie do you think you've seen the most? Oh, probably Willy Wonka. Is that because of the family or because of you? Because of, um, well, probably me you know originally obviously and then uh we've only recently probably in the last 12 months started introducing uh the older two kids to it um and they're probably even a little bit young for it to be honest but i just want to get it into their sort of consciousness as early as i can I, listen i don't blame you um is there a tv series that you have watched all the way through more than once I'm going to say no. The answer is no, but I've been very close. And my, we talk, you're so spoiled now because it, it's always just the next thing and the next thing. And this is great. And this is great. So you've always got something new to look forward to. But now and again, you hit a little bit of a rut, don't you? And you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Really and I, I, we've, we've toyed with the idea of, of starting um, uh, of starting Sopranos again, toyed with the idea of starting uh, The Wire again. And um, yeah, my be that 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 might they're probably the two that we've toyed with i mean i've probably seen every friends episode more than once so does that count i don't know no no it counts it, it okay. counts right um what have you been binge watching uh during the pandemic i mean it feels so long ago now tiger king doesn't it really it feels like a lifetime ago but i guess i was on that train um with every every single person in the world who had netflix um uh, wow, what else have we watched? Um, I've been watching a lot of... Uh... God, that's terrible, isn't it? I don't even know. I mean, we're so tired once we put the kids to bed that we're like, you know, we can usually squeeze out like one episode or something and then like there's not even time for binge. It's like, uh, it's like watch one episode and go, oh my God, it's nine o'clock. We have to go to bed. <laughs> that's, that's kind of our life. Um but um, I tell you, there's a show that I don't know how you can get it in the States, but it's a beautiful show called Mum. Um, and it's Leslie Manville is the lead in it, who is obviously an absolute legend. And it's just so wonderful. It's just beautifully, um, very funny, very British, I guess. But it's very, um, it's, it's, it's really worth finding if you can. So we, we definitely binged that when it was on at the Done 2 series. Um, w jumping into your acting career for a second, uh, when was the last time you remember being super nervous about getting ready to film something and why? Every single job I do. Um, because if you lose that, I think you're screwed. I mean, you should be sort of terrified. You know, I'm, you know, I, I even heard Michael Caine talk about that years ago about like, you know, how the terror of, <laughs> and you know, uh, of, of, of doing it, of hearing the word action, <laughs> it's terrifying. And just knowing you're about to commit something to celluloid for, uh, for the rest of time. And all these people are, um, are working hard. And this guy's got this really tricky focus pool to do. And the camera movement's really tricky. And it's kind of, you know, if you fuck it up, it's, uh, it's, it affects all these people. And, I'm very aware of that and I carry that a lot, I think. And, you know, but I think it's right. It's, it's, it's a sort of nervous energy, but it's an excited energy. You know, I just finished shooting this movie with uh, Kenneth Branagh directing and, you know, he's such a legend and I, I'm, I, I'm such a fan of his and I've always wanted to work with him. And so day one on that, I mean, it's the last thing I shot. We just, we just wrapped um, day one on that. I was like, is, is Kenneth Branagh really about to watch me act and be happy with it? You know, <laughs> like how's this gonna go but it was like the most joyous experience ever oh we're gonna get to belfast in a little bit okay. um what's funny is i interviewed kenneth earlier this year and he was telling me about how he was writing something personal and we were gonna right. we shoot it later this year and he wasn't specific with me but now i know what it is and you know everything else yep. um what's the most important thing you need in your trailer <laughs> um probably like some sort of like 
I, I'm obsessed with this stuff called biltong, which is a, like it's South African, but you can get it everywhere now. It's basically like a, a, a dried out m- meat. I mean, it's it's like a, f- a fancier version of jerky, I guess. Uh, you guys have jerky, but jerky is quite dry, I find, and it's a, it's a little bit. Uh, I, I I'm one of those people. I need to. I need. To, I pretty much. I'm ha- only happy if I'm eating. Um, so I'm. I'm. I try to like make sure my trailer's stocked with like stuff that's like filling and high in protein and they'll keep me um going a bit so um probably that or this crazy when we were doing wild mountain time emily got me hooked on this like this uh i don't know it's like an energy drink i think it was we called it our acting juice it was like we felt that we got to a stage where we sort of couldn't work without it <laughs> it's this crazy like fizzy um energy drink that like Dwayne Johnson had got her into when they did Jungle Cruise or something. It's kind of kind of crazy uh thing. So um I might need that from now on. Got it. Um well what you didn't realize it's called Jolt uh, Cola. It's just caffeine and sugar. That stuff, no it's not that stuff. That stuff is rocket fuel. Right, exactly. I'm I'm listen, anything that Dwayne is drinking is obviously super healthy. <laughs> exactly. Will I look like him, do you think? I th- you're gonna land on your feet. You're going to be okay. okay. Right. Um, what props or costumes have you taken home from set? I don't do that. I've not really, really? done that. I don't think, no. I tell you, um, the only one that sort of comes to mind, I remember, um, and yeah, no, I, I the, the, um, my like paramedic jacket and synchronic, um, I, they gave me that at the end as a gift um, because I think I'd voiced a lot of, you know, while we were shooting, I'd done a lot of, um, you know, I love this, <laughs> I really love this jacket. I would wear this jacket, you know, socially. So they um, they gave me that as a gift at the end. But usually I don't ask for stuff or take stuff. It's interesting. I totally would be taking everything and <laughs> having a storage unit uh, filled with crap. Um, but that's me. I think if I was on like, you know, something really iconic, you know, like Star Wars or something, I'd probably be trying to take some sort of prop that like, everyone would know about and have it in a case on my you know shelf or something but I, I haven't done that yet uh you many years ago before you were an actor um you used to do modeling work for like hugo boss and calvin klein and a bunch of places um can you watch the movie zoolander and have fun with it um you've seen zoolander right of course i've seen zoolander um i i i love it's such a brilliant movie it's so obviously so funny um what is crazy about it is that like well i'll tell you what i was really lucky because i never did um runway i've never done a catwalk in my life i i i i kind of hated modeling to be honest so um i could just about take my get my photograph taken which i again i really don't didn't enjoy don't enjoy but the whole like trying to look cool walking up and down the thing forget about it like i I just couldn't do that so i literally never did it in my life but uh, one time I went to try to do it in like Milan or something when I was like 20 and I sort of got laughed out of the room. I don't have a great walk anyway. And I probably wasn't really tall enough for runway stuff anyway. Um, but I met a lot of, it's the only time really, cause I was sort of lucky that I did photographic stuff. Um, it was one of the only times I was around a lot of other male models was when I went to like Milan to try to do these, get these shows. And um, Zoolander isn't that far off. Some of the guys, I'm not, I'm literally serious. Like some of those guys were, were, that was kind of their vibe. They weren't like, it wasn't like, it was obviously heightened in the movie, but like, I mean, I've I've actually seen the clip of there's some, it's on YouTube of the thing that inspired like Ben Stiller um, of these guys who were like supermodels back in the nineties or whatever. And they're, they're not quite doing the thing at the gas station with the thing, but they're, they're, they're so dumb and um, uh, great inspiration for, for a great comedy. But um. I've seen guys like that. And I'm very glad I'm not involved in that anymore. Yeah, that's an industry that will never uh, pass me an invite. So um, I, can, I can only ask about it and live vicariously through other people. Um, <laughs> move, moving on to the next thing. Uh, I saw on Instagram that you ha- had built recently a Lego set. Uh, I, yes. I am a big fan of Lego. And I think a lot of people are big fans of Lego, especially during the pandemic when you're trapped at home. Uh, what are... Did you have fun building that thing? I'm, I'm going to blow your mind, Steve. Um, today, it's half term, so my kids are off school. Um, we went to Legoland today. <laughs> right. 
I mean, li- literally today. Um, and, you know, it's a great setup there, the UK Legoland. I mean, they, um, it's very, they're wiping down everything constantly. You're constantly hand sanitized. Everyone's wearing a mask. It, it was, it was great, you know. Um, and obviously they, they do, it's not full, you know, they don't allow, they only allow a certain amount of people. But um, it was, uh, it stressed me out. Some of the, some of the, some of the things that are built with Lego, and I'm sure the huge things are they're they're not all Lego inside. I'm sure, but um, it it gave me sort of flashbacks to having um to to build these things for the kids because they they honestly think like they bring it home and they they want to play with it immediately and they they expect me. Uh, I sort of guess I give off this impression that I can sort of do everything, fix everything, and you know I'm just some like oracle of like you know anything they need done or any information they need that they, they think my wife and I can answer and, and can provide, which obviously isn't the case. And I mean, I had to build this bus thing, this like fun bus. I mean, it took me all day. I mean, it really took me all day. It took me seven or eight hours of the day building this thing. They played with it for 25 minutes and you know, it's, it, I don't think it's been touched since. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like kids. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You know, um, one of the things that I've, uh, there's no good thing about the pandemic because obviously it's terrible. The one thing I think is a positive though for famous people is you can actually go out in public and no one really knows who you are. So were you able to experience like Legoland? Cause you're wearing a mask. Like, could you actually experience it where people are like leaving you alone? Um, right up until we left, I swear like nothing got totally got away with it. Um, uh, I was wearing like a cap and a mask and it was sunny, very sunny today. So I had glasses, sunglasses on some of the time. And then right at the end, we were sort of like, before we got in the car, making the girls go to, go to the bathroom one more time before we get in the car. And I was standing outside the bathroom. I noticed a couple of the staff, a couple of the girls and staff notice and giggle and blah, blah, blah. And um, they didn't make a scene. Like they, they were a little bit chatty on the way out, but they you, you sort of can't ask for a photograph really in this time, which is... Um, you know, fortunate, unfortunate, whatever way you want to look at it. But um, that was it. And we'd been there for like four hours and, and nobody said anything. So um, it was pretty good. Although I did have one thing I, I was buying. I was in uh, like a record store a few weeks ago buying like wrap gifts actually for, for Belfast. And um, uh, I was wearing my mask, obviously, and I was paying. And the guy behind the counter was like, he recognized me from my voice, which is really really weird and he'd been like binging the fall at the moment because it's just come on the netflix here so he was like oh hold on a second you jamie dornan and i was like uh yeah wow this is great i really thought i'd no one would <laughs> recognize me in this mask and he was like it's your voice it's your voice I was like, okay i also think though if you've been binging something and you've been staring at like your eyes and then no, right, all right, of a sudden right. you know and you hear the voice you see the eyes you're like wait a minute you know that's true that's true yeah um, so jumping into why I actually get to talk to you today. So I thought Synchronic was a fantastic original sci-fi movie. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of this film. Um, what was it like? Talk a little bit about um, reading that script for the first time because it, it's fucking cool. Yeah, well, it is that. It is fucking cool. And it's to be honest, it was unexpected for me. Um, it, it, it affected me emotionally in a way that I wasn't expecting a sci-fi script to affect me. Often, you know, I'm not a huge sci-fi guy, I have to admit, but like often with sci-fi movies, I can feel fairly disconnected from the characters that I'm, that I'm watching for two hours. I'm a bit like, I don't really care what happens to these people. They're sort of like fairly two dimensional and they haven't given me any information about them. That's going to like attach me to them more than they're like good looking actors, like running around with laser guns. So, this grabbed me in a different kind of way, you know, and I felt very connected to the, to the, to the story and to, to the, the plight that, that these, both these guys are going through, you know, and it was very heavy and, and, you know, relatable and, but also had this other real fantastical mad aspect to it. And, you know, it got me at the end. I cried at the end, you know, and I really wasn't expecting to be so emotionally moved by it. And, um, you know, I'd seen the endless that, that that Aaron and Justin had done, and I just thought these guys are really exciting, and they're, and they're treading new ground, and they're they're tr- they're they're paving a way for a different type of sci-fi movie. I, I felt like, and I still feel like, so 
it was a cool opportunity, I think, and 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 also with with uh, with I, I think I was attached first, but then there was already a lot of talk about Anthony Mackey, who um I you know as a fan of, so it was just like one of those things where, um you know shooting in New Orleans, which is a is is a is a city that I really wanted to get to know. You know, I'd been there for two nights before and never really stayed and uh, wanted to get the opportunity to know it better. So it's like this, this perfect sort of marriage of, of aspects that, um, that, that that made me say yes very quickly. Yeah, I, I obviously don't want to do spoilers, but I will say that one of the really smart things about this script is <clears throat> using the history of New Orleans as a major story point in the sci-fi of the film and being able to use it in a very cost-effective way. Yes, yes, yes. Totally true. And I mean, they they really, I mean, it's, you know, like you say often with, with movies that um, the city it's set in becomes a character in the movie, but I, I mean, none more so than this. You know, it is um, <clears throat> so beautiful, but also... I mean, they really showed New Orleans for like every aspect that that city can offer, you know, and the sort of shiny, glitzy aspect of it. And also the really down and dirty, desolate um, parts of the city of which we shot in many of them. But also this, that city has such a soul, you know, the people have such a soul. And uh, I think we did a, you know, they did an amazing job at, at capturing that, you know, and um Again, for you know, not they didn't have a load of money to to, to play with, obviously in, in this movie, and none of us are getting you know paid what I guess we're usually paid, and um, I just think they made it look so elevated beyond what they had with 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 the, the way they shot it, you know. No, completely, and and it's it's just a testament to the power of storytelling because it's clear that this is not being made for some crazy budget, but yet. Yeah they managed to tell this great story on a very limited budget. And, um, you know, but what, what, when you're getting, when you're given a script like this, like synchronic, how much are the directors and, and people telling you about the full story arc and what it is and how much are people saying to you, Hey, read the script. We don't really want to tell you too much. Yeah. A bit of both really, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to um, the script and, and, I think it's kind of good to read, you know, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I get sent a lot of stuff and uh, usually there'll be uh, along with the script, there'll be my agent saying <clears throat> if, if it's someone I don't know about particularly well, like if I don't know a lot about his or her stuff, there'll be a bit of a thing about, about like these guys are really exciting. This woman's really exciting. You need to, you should read this or prioritize this script above those other two we sent, whatever it is, you know. So there's usually you have an idea of what you're in for and and, and what the uh, appetite of your 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 team is around the, the filmmaker. But essentially, I have to respond to the script. And with Synchronic, I just responded to the script. And then it was a bonus of them meeting Justin and Aaron and, and hearing their vision and their enthusiasm and their... Um, yeah, just their, their, the, the sort of joy that they seem to have of making films. You know, they're, they're really like, you know, there's, they're, they're, they're so thirsty for it. You know, they, they are like ambitious, yes, but like they're so excited. They're so excited that they're getting to make these movies, that they write themselves, that, you know, that, that Aaron is a, is a DP on them. And, you know, that often they act in their movies, you know, they're, um, not this time, but everything they've done be since before they've acted in, I think they're doing something at the moment that they're acting in. So they just, that gets so joyful to be around these guys who just love making movies. You know, this is very infectious, you know? Um, so uh, I'd like the script anyway. And then I met those boys and, you know, over uh, Skype or be this before Zoom, anybody knew what Zoom was, I think before the pandemic. Um, and uh, then it was just, you know, their enthusiasm was so infectious and it always just seemed like such an easy decision. It's so interesting because scripts are the, the best, someone said this to me recently during an interview and it's so true. Scripts are a terrible, they're, they're the, a terrible blueprint for what the cinematic experience is actually gonna be like, but it's the mm -hmm. only thing you have. Um, <laughs> yes. So what, if you don't mind sharing, is there like a script that you read 
that you're like, ooh, this is not going to work. And then it ended up being like fantastic or a script that you oh. thought was wow. And then it just did not, you know what I mean? Like an example of how the script can really not reflect the final product. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, um, that's why it's often really good to, um, if there's a lot in there that you do, um, I don't know, cling on to, there's a lot in there that you do like about a script. It's always worth, you know, hearing, <coughs> discovering what else you can find out about how they want it to look, you know, and now when you get a script, there's so, it's very rare to get a script that doesn't have a lookbook attached and all like a deck showing you like shot ideas and, and, and real, like very detailed description of the, the characters and biographies and a more in-depth idea of why they're telling the story and, and the director's vision. So usually that accompanies a script these days, you know, which is really, really helpful because um, you can read a script one way and then, you see what their visual landscape is like for it. And you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's really not how I saw it, you know? And that's actually maybe better than how I saw it, or that's like way off and actually don't, if they want it to look like that, which if you're seeing it at that stage, that's how they want to look at it. That's how they want it to look. Then, you know, it maybe doesn't work out so much. I've had scripts I've read where I've kind of really uh, liked it. Um, and I, visually and the screen directions are so... Um, uh, dense and uh, detailed and really beautiful and you find yourself getting like oh my god this is going to look so amazing the way the description of when they open that door and see that world for the first time it's crazy and then you go actually hold on a minute the dialogue's terrible and at the end of the day you have to say those words and um, as actors I'm, I'm sure I speak for everyone we've all been in situations where you're saying words that you don't love and they don't feel that comfortable and they, they don't come out easy. And, um, and so uh, if you've had those experiences before, you have to make sure that the words on the page are words you want to say. I don't care how beautiful the description is. You've got to be able, the words have got to be great. So you've sort of ended up casting those scripts aside because of that, because at the end of the day, they can ham it up talking about how beautiful the shot's going to be and ever, but you still have to stand there and say that dialogue. And if that dialogue's not good enough, it's not going to work. Jumping into Wild Mountain, um, since no one will have seen the movie yet, uh, and I hate asking the generic thing, but can you, for people that want to know about the movie, how have you been describing it? I've probably said this during press before for movies and maybe not totally believed it, but it is kind of like a movie like you haven't seen before. It is like... Um, or it's like a movie from another time and I think in the most beautiful way and, and really poignant way and really suitable for the time we're living in way. It is like an old school romance. It is almost fable-esque, fairy tale-esque in, in the sort of how, how sort of heightened the romance of it is. And there are these, you know, it centers around these two um, fairly odd people. You know, my character, Anthony Riley, and Emily Blunt's character, Rosemary Muldoon, who have grown up on, they're farmers and they've grown up uh, on the neighbouring farms in, in rural Ireland. And um, there has been this crazy connection, more so from one side for their whole lives, and they haven't been able to do anything about it. Um, and we're, you're basically getting to uh, glimpse into the minds of these two very complicated people who who ultimately you really want to be together as 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 difficult as that concept seems at times because of the way they behave but I, I, it's you know i guess it's john patrick shanley who is a, a titan of our industry um and he has a particular tone i think this is almost going back to his earlier films like Moonstruck in, in its tone, which at the time was its own thing, you know, when you watch Moonstruck now and it kind of lives in its own sort of world. And I, I hope Wild Mountain Time sort of finds that similar kind of place where people will get really sort of like enraptured by it. If they buy into it, they'll, they'll be like, they'll, they'll be really into it. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, it, but, it, but it, I don't think it's like anything else anyone's going to see uh, this year or next year. Um, I watched it last night and I will say that you are 100% correct. It is not yeah. like something, it is an old school romance. Um, you play a character that is very emotionally 
closed off. Um, and uh, what is that like, you know, because it, obviously that, that isn't you, you know? Um, so what is that like? I mean, it was a huge challenge for me, but actually weirdly, you know, I guess it, 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 if, <clears throat> I mean, it kind of is set modern day, but I think you'll agree with me that it almost feels like it's set in another time. Um, yep. If, you know, let's say it is today, Anthony's on the spectrum. He is, and you know, and I'm not saying that's a negative thing or anything, but he would be classified as someone who's on the spectrum now. He's someone who's finds um, dealing with his own emotions, other people's emotions, very difficult, you know. And he is someone who is uh, not quite world ready, I would say. He's he's kind of a bit. Um, he's sort of being disconnected from the world for most of his life, and as a result has a lot of social anxiety and is, is, is a difficult person in his own skin. And I feel like there's a lot, you know, I find there as much as, you know, I, you can often give off this idea that you're confident or gregarious or have stories to tell or, or have, have a sort of, um, you know, uh, a, a, a likeness of yourself, whatever it is, all these things that you try to em emit. Um, often inside, you're you're terrified, and and you you feel like you really can't um, expose certain aspects of yourself. And there's a lot of Anthony that I I felt that I had with within me, and a lot of his strangeness and his quirkiness. And I think a lot of people do carry that within them, and maybe don't let the world see it a lot of the time. And uh, so um, it was nice for me, I feel, to be able to maybe through Anthony show a lot of my own sort of uh, oddness, or quirkiness, weirdness that I carry within my own bones. Um, and it's just a joy to, to, to play him. I really, I mean, it was such an incredible experience making that movie you know with that cast and with john and it was it was a mad brilliant uh, experience i have literally like 15 questions about that film and i have one minute left with you so i need to move <laughs> okay. on uh we'll probably okay. we'll, we'll talk again when the movie's coming out i will just say for everyone who's going to watch it uh make sure you have a guinness in hand <laughs> yeah you should just make sure you have a guinness in hand whenever you're watching any movie right uh my only beef with the film is that there is a guinness bottle that's in the film and I just really wanted them to be drinking from the tap. Um, it was the whole thing, but let's, uh, let's move on because I'm, I'm basically out of time. Um, but I really have to talk about Belfast and Kenneth Branagh um, because there's not much information known about it. What, what are you allowed to say about what the film is about and who you play? Probably not that much. Um, I, you know, I, you can look into it what you will that like Ken is, originally from Belfast and this is a story called Belfast. So, you know, I, I probably can't say too much more than that, well, but it's, um, let me, let it's me something say as, 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 as he, you know, as he said to you, when you interviewed him, I presume for Tenet. Um, it's oh, actually deeply, it, was for, it was for Artemis Fowl. Oh, it's for Artemis Fowl. Okay. But it's yeah. deeply personal. It's deeply personal story uh, for, for Ken as, as he's already divulged to you. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's a, a personal story about, a, you know, the, involving Ken, I guess, is all I can say. But I had an absolute dream making that movie. I mean, I literally wrapped two weeks ago and, and you know, I don't think it's a secret that Judy Dench is in it and, and Kieran Hines and Katrina Balfe and all these amazing people. Again, similar to Wild Mountain Time, just felt so lucky and synchronic. And I, I feel like everything I've done recently, I've been surrounded by these incredible actors and support players who have, we've all just been this sort of magical team with people I look up to and it's, it's, it's I feel very lucky. I, I know it takes place in the late sixties and um, I think it's basically about a boy growing up in the sixties and it's essentially Kenneth from what I can understand. You know, I mean, listen, you, you know, <laughs> I know, no, I, I know you can't say anything. Um, listen, I, I got to stop there, but I really mean it that um, everyone should watch Synchronic, especially if you want to see original sci-fi um, and support original sci-fi. And um, we'll definitely talk again for Wild Mountain because of, you know, I want to talk about Christopher Walken and the insane scenery. And it was like picturesque. I mean, there's a million things to talk about. Yeah, we'll you know? definitely do that. I love that. Um, yeah, and on that note, congrats on everything. And thank you for indulging all my stupid questions at the beginning. Thanks, Steve. Always a pleasure, man.